guys, welcome back to It's Gotta Be Halloween, which is 31 tutorials in the month of October. If you do decide to use any of these tutorials, please use the hashtag It's Gotta Be Halloween so I can see your recreations. And if you want to make sure you don't miss a single video this month, hit that subscribe button to be notified the second they're live on my channel. I woke up today to a thousand subscribers and I think that's insane. Um, my Ballora tutorial has like blown up and for all the people asking me to do other characters, I do have a few of them planned in It's Gotta Be Halloween, but I do have other makeups that I want to do, so I might end up doing more Five Nights at Freddy's characters after It's Gotta Be Halloween, so just be patient. I see all your requests. I try to respond to as many comments as possible, but there's been so many recently. Sorry you didn't get a video yesterday. I had some technical difficulties with that one, so I'm giving you two tutorials today. This is going to be a nice, quick, and easy one, and hopefully the second one will be more of a full look. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably know I kind of have a thing with gouged out eye makeups. They're some of my favorite illusions to do just because they're so easy and yet really, really gross. So I figured I'd show you guys one of the ways to create a gouged eye makeup. It's something quick and easy to do for Halloween. As always, all the products used will be listed in the description. And with all that said, let's get into the tutorial. So for this particular look, I'm using a latex and tissue buildup, but you could use scar wax or silicone modeling compounds as well. When doing latex buildups, you want to use a material that has a smooth texture. You don't want to use anything with a texture or pattern stamped into it. I'm using tissues and have ripped them into little strips. By ripping them instead of cutting them, you create a jagged edge that is easier to blend later. I'm applying latex around my eye in small sections and placing bits of the tissue on top and smoothing the edges down with more latex. Once I have all my tissue laid down, I seal it all in with a layer of latex and do the other eye. Remember that before you use liquid latex on anyone for the first time, you should do a patch test on their wrist or inner arm, and if any sort of irritation, rash, or itchiness occurs, you should not proceed with using it on them because they could be allergic. I use a hair dryer on low to speed up the drying process. Then I pick and peel the edges so I have a lip of sorts for the wound. Tasty, huh? Then, since my wounds are so light in color because of the white tissue, I go in with concealer to blend them into my skin a little better. And I also put concealer on my blocked out eyebrows. I blocked out my eyebrows because I knew I would be placing latex near them, and latex will rip out hair if placed over it. If you do ever get a small amount of latex in your hair, let it dry, then apply any kind of oil using circular motions. This should make the latex clump into small balls that are more easily picked off of hair. Then I apply foundation to my face and set it with powder. And now for the toothbrush spattering, just like in my trypophobia tutorial. Once again, I'm spattering with alcohol paints to break up the coloring of the wounds and to blend them into my skin. To really make sure your edges are concealed, spatter past them and onto your bare skin because if you stop the color breakup where your edges stop, it will just bring more attention to them. I spatter a combination of white, pink, light red, and dark red to break up my edges. And I'm taking a ripped up sponge to add some more precise irritation to areas of the wounds. Next, I paint inside the wounds black to conceal my eyes when they are closed. I add some light contouring to my face and chest to make my features look more sunken in and sickly. And 
and I blend out the contouring so it's not too harsh. Then I highlight the inner edge of the eyes with white grease paint so it pops forward. I fill the bottom edge with some gel blood and use liquid blood to add some drips from the wounds. Thank you so much for watching another day of It's Gotta Be Halloween. Remember, keep an eye out. <laughs> Pun not necessarily intended, but appreciated. Uh, for the second tutorial today, because I'm going to try to get it out. It might be a little later because I do have to edit this one and post it. That's irrelevant to you because it's already been done if you're watching this. So just keep an eye out for that one. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.